Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, I'm going to, like Ron, I'll start with a satellite image, but I'm going to move us to the mountains uh, of, of California. This is obviously snow cover in the Sierra Nevada and the uh, showing the Central Valley and, and, and uh, Sierra, Southern Sierra Nevada part of California. And I'm going to address the questions of water supply, which obviously serves all of our cities. So there's, a, there's the, the link there. And it's something that uh, resiliency that's been built into our water supply systems in the past, we're realizing is not sufficient uh, going forward, both from an infrastructure and an information standpoint. I think there was an op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle about the infrastructure aspect, and we've written various pieces ourselves about uh, the information part of it. I'm going to structure my comments around these questions that are, and I'll go through each one individually, that are, that are relevant to this, uh, I think, this, this uh, symposium today, the what, why, and how of, of uh, water supply. So uh, why is it important? I'm going to use, uh, as, as an example, forecasting the timing of snowmelt runoff from the mountains because much of our water supply for California used that, that we use actually comes from Sierra Nevada snowpack. Uh, it's 60 some percent as I, uh, as, I, as I recall. And data on the amount of water that's uh, available on a day-to-day -day basis is used for everything from uh, hydropower scheduling and if you're a hydropower operator you want to keep your water levels as high as you can uh, and then use the use the if you're in the mountains use the water for hydropower when it's most optimal in the in the network uh, recently people have talked about filling the gap using hydropower to fill the gaps in wind which is so the use of hydropower is changing and it, there's greater information needs there uh, on different time scales planning and scheduling agricultural uh, investments, and then transporting that water uh, to cities and, and various other questions end up uh, getting asked of our limited water information systems. What do, what do decision makers and stakeholders need to know? Now, as you know, it's not like uh, the, the traffic app where I'm going to be carrying around a water system and look at it in my pocket, but there's a small number of decision makers and, and a larger number of interested people that are asking questions for individual, individual river basins, like uh, basically you know, how much precipitation, and that relates to both flood, flooding and, and water supply, but also questions that we, you know, the upper ones depend partly on, you know, broader weather systems and we know the forecasts for those go only go out a few days. These are questions we can answer, the lower, lower four, we can answer with data and measurements on the ground. How much snow is out there in the mountains right now? Nobody can answer that question accurately. We know how much snow there is at a few points because there's a measurements at a few points, but you know, anybody that's been out skiing or whatever knows that it's this deep over here and it's this deep over here. The snow is very heterogeneous. Um, and next, when will it melt and how much runoff will that melt uh, produce? On a, on a, and again, our time, our time scale for real-time data is daily as opposed to, uh, you know, minute to minute. And then when will the runoff, how much runoff and when will it occur? So I wanted to point out that right now, this is not a data intensive activity. There's a, if I go out to the, say the American River Basin, which is you know, above Sacramento, there's, there's about seven or eight of these snow pillows, which is a fluid filled bag with a pressure transducer in it. And those give an index at a few locations of how much snow is out in the mountains. There's maybe twice as many precipitation stations and temperature measurements and so forth in the basin. So we're not actually covering it that, that much. And when one makes a forecast right now of 
how much water is uh, available for a in a given river, say for hydropower, water supply, and so forth. One has these limited ground stations, a weather forecast, some, uh, something more sophisticated than just a gut feeling because people actually do say, well, 2013, that sort of looks like 2004. <laughs> or they'll go back and, and, and use some very simple regression methods for then forecasting and decision making. Where we're uh, trying to take this is addressing these problems is using some of the low cost measurement technology and also satellite and aircraft technology, which is not so low cost, but it's uh, satellites at least publicly subsidized for uh, addressing these questions. We've deployed uh, wireless sensor networks. So instead of one snow pillow, then for snow, we can put out 10 or 20 uh, acoustic sensors on a wireless system and get a spatially representative measurement so we can actually answer the question of how much snow is out there. So, you know, Ron had his sampling strategy for the city to get representative values. Our sampling strategy, if you look at our grid, it's not on an XY axis, it's on a slope aspect elevation axis in the mountains. And using low cost sensors for uh, also soil, soil moisture, how much water is in the soil. Because in the mountains we have water stored in the snowpack and the soil, basically. And, and then the, the downstream reservoirs. Daily basis, there's satellite. Uh, the, this is a 500 by 500 meter resolution on the MODIS satellite and it'll be, in the next launch will be a little bit finer resolution for answering the question of how much of the ground is covered with snow. As long as there's no clouds there. And then periodic LIDAR flights give us vegetation properties. We also measure snow depth with <coughs> these laser imaging from aircraft. So when you, when you bring to bear these uh, sensor networks which have, which have matured to operational use in, in about the past three to five years, I think, for remote areas, everything's on solar, the maturing of the satellite technology within the last five to 10 years to give usable information, instead of the information for the Sierra Nevada that you can fit into one spreadsheet, we end up with, uh, you know, a, potentially up to a petabyte of data per year to, to bring to bear on these. So we, we do have a big, data, a big data issue if we're going to realize the potential of this, of this technology. Now some of, the, some of the challenges, our sensor networks that we've deployed are at the scale of about a kilometer. That, um, have been in operation for a few years. The technology is, is proven. We've now moved to the scale of the American River Basin. Uh, these uh, these uh, red dots are where there were, uh, red and green dots are where there were existing sensors. So then deploying these kilometer scale sensor networks around the basin strategically, we can get representative measurements across the basin. So at this point, we are deploying, uh, we, are, we are deploying, uh, going from hundreds of sensors to potentially thousands of sensors out, out in a prototype basin. So what's, what's missing in terms of uh, making use of this technology is the sensors that are out there. And then the data and delivery systems are also uh, need to be put in, put in place. And I think the data processing is, a, is maybe some similarities to the other examples, but it's very heterogeneous data because we have you know, spatial satellite data coming in here, sensor data with gaps in it that has to be cleaned and so forth. There's lots of data processing that one ends up with in order to uh, still deliver the, the few values needed for uh, decision support, but to re but the goal is to reduce the uncertainty in, in that decision making by you know, 50% or more 
and that and potentially that means uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of revenue for better water forecasts. So the the challenge is, uh, in some sense, is everybody wants this technology, but who's going to be the investor, and how are they going to get the revenue stream? So I think the technology is there. It's we're at some of the uh, questions of how to, how to implement it and uh, the systems questions of how to put it all together. So what we're aiming for is really, uh, I'll close with this, a water secure uh, world. And to get there, people have read in the papers and been engaged in debates about, you know, California needs more infrastructure, we need another dam, or whatever, and so forth. And then there's the local solutions. We'll just do everything with water conservation. Well, there's going to be a blend of infrastructure and, and uh, institutional solutions to provide a water secure system. But the foundation of that has to be better information, both for planning and operation uh, going forward. So again, achieving water security through Blending of these heterogeneous data sources and efficient processing is, is a challenge that uh, we've uh, taken up here in Citrus within the last year or two. That's my message. Thank, Thank you. you very much.